This is lesson 16 in our Calculus 2 series, the Comparison Theorem for Improper Integrals. Sometimes we'd like to determine if an improper integral converges even if we can't find the value to which it converges. And the Comparison Theorem allows us to compare improper integrals and helps us to determine convergence or divergence. So suppose we have the following. Suppose we have f and g continuous functions with f of x greater than or equal to g of x greater than or equal to zero for all x greater than or equal to a. So graphically speaking, that's going to look like this. Now let's take a look at these unbounded areas. Notice that the area under f of x is bigger than the area under g of x. So if we could show that the integral of f of x from a to infinity converges, then surely the integral of g of x from a to infinity will also converge. It's a smaller area. If the area under f is finite, then certainly the area under g will have to be finite as well. Similarly, if we can show that the area under g is infinite, then certainly the area under f must also be infinite. So if the integral of g of x from a to infinity diverges, then so will integral f of x from a to infinity. That's what the comparison theorem tells us. So if integral f of x from a to infinity converges, then integral of g of x from a to infinity also converges. If integral g of x from a to infinity diverges, then also integral f of x from a to infinity diverges. So let's take a look at an example. Here we have the integral from 1 to infinity, 2 plus e to the negative x over x. Now we know from lesson 15 that the integral of 2 over x from 1 to infinity is going to diverge. Because remember that's the 1 over x to the p where p is equal to 1. So we know that that's going to diverge. So if we can make a comparison between this function and 2 over x, in particular, if we could show that this function is greater than or equal to 2 over x, then we would know that this integral diverges as well. So let's take a look. 2 plus e to the negative x is strictly greater than 2 because e to the negative x is a positive value. Now, because these x values are positive, 2 plus e to the negative x over x is greater than 2 over x. Remember that if we had divided by a negative number, we would need to reverse the inequality. But because we're dividing by a positive number here, we know that that's not an issue. So we do have 2 plus e to the negative x over x strictly greater than 2 over x for all x greater than or equal to 1. And therefore, we can make the comparison. We know that the integral of 2 over x from 1 to infinity is going to diverge. So therefore, our given integral also diverges. And here's the visual to go with that. So recall from lesson 15 that integrals from 1 to infinity, 1 over x to the p, are going to converge for p greater than 1 and diverge for p less or equal to 1. And the 1 over x to the p integrals from 0 to 1 will converge for p less than 1 and diverge for p greater than or equal to 1. So here we were looking at 2 over x, which is 2 times 1 over x. And when p is equal to 1, either of these integrals are going to diverge. Let's take a look at another example. Integral 1 to infinity x over square root of 1 plus x to the sixth. Now again, we'd like to compare this to uh, 1 over x to the p, if we can do that. Well, what's keeping this function from being in the form 1 over x to the p? It's this addition of the 1 that we have down here. So let's take a look at comparing this function with x over radical x to the sixth. Because this function can be simplified. We know that for x values greater than or equal to 1, they're positive. So this is simplified to x to the third in the denominator. And so the fraction simplifies to 1 over x squared. Now what's the comparison between these two functions? Notice that the denominator in our original function was bigger because of the addition of the 1. If the denominator is bigger, the entire fraction is smaller. So we have a less than sign here. So our original function is strictly less than 1 over x squared. 
Now we know that 1 over x squared from 1 to infinity converges. And our function is smaller than 1 over x squared for that interval, and so our integral must also converge. Let's take a look at another. Here we have integral from 0 to 1 e to the negative x over radical x. Again, we'd like to compare it to a 1 over x to the p. The 1 over x to the p functions are not the only ones we like to compare to, but they're definitely the simplest ones to compare to, so if we can, that's what we're going to go for. So here we want to compare to 1 over radical x. Now look at the interval we're on. We're on the interval 0 to 1. So what do we know about e to the negative x on this interval? We know that it's a decreasing function and its maximum value occurs at x equals 0. So e to the 0 is its maximum value on this interval. e to the 0 is 1, so we know that e to the negative x is less or equal to 1 on this interval. Again, we're dividing by positive numbers, so that preserves the order of the inequality here. And so we have e to the negative x over radical x less or equal to 1 over radical x. And we know that the integral of 1 over radical x from 0 to 1 converges. Our function is less than 1 over radical x on the same interval. Therefore, our original integral also converges. And keep in mind that if you forget the rules for 1 over x to the p, you can always evaluate those integrals. So for example, the integral we just had here from 0 to 1 of 1 over radical x, we would pull that 0 off because that's the discontinuity, that's the problem here. And so we'd have a limit as a goes to 0 from the right, integral a to 1 of x to the negative 1 half. We integrate by adding 1 here and dividing by that number. That gives us 2x to the 1 half as a goes to 0 from the right. We're plugging in our bounds and subtracting, so we have 2 times radical 1 minus 2 times radical a, and a is going to 0, so this goes to 2, it converges. And so we were able to make that comparison here. Let's take a look at this one. Integral 0 to infinity e to the negative x squared. Does this converge or diverge? Now, there aren't any powers of x here in the denominator, so we're not going to try to compare this to a 1 over x to the p. What else can we compare it to? Well, let's compare it to e to the negative x, because this we can integrate, and so we can evaluate that improper integral. Remember that e to the negative x squared is one of the functions for which we cannot find an antiderivative. So we wouldn't be able to evaluate this improper integral by integrating. So let's take a look at the comparison of e to the negative x squared to e to the negative x. And our integral we're talking about is going from 0 to infinity. So notice that for x values between 0 and 1, we have g of x greater than or equal to f of x. But then for x values 1 to infinity, we have f of x greater than or equal to g of x. Now if we're talking about this improper integral converging or diverging, we really only have to worry about what's happening as x goes towards infinity. The area under g of x from 0 to 1 is a finite area, so that's not going to affect the convergence or divergence. The convergence or divergence is governed by the behavior of the graph as x goes towards infinity. So let's take a look at the convergence or divergence of f of x equals e to the negative x from 1 to infinity. So we pull off the infinity, and this is limit as b goes to infinity, 1 to b, e to the negative x dx. So that's limit as b goes to infinity, negative e to the negative x, plugging in b and 1. So now we're here. And as b goes to infinity, this goes to infinity, so this entire fraction goes to 0, and so we have 0 plus 1 over e. So this integral converges. Notice from our graph, e to the negative x squared is less or equal to e to the negative x from 1 to infinity. So the area under e to the negative x squared is going to be a smaller area than this one, which converges. So from 1 to infinity, we can use the comparison theorem, and we know that e to the negative x squared converges on this interval. 
But as we said before, the integral from 0 to 1 is a finite area. It's a finite integral. So that's not going to change the convergence. And so we can say that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared also converges. And with this, we'll conclude our lesson on the comparison theorem.